I'd now like to introduce Monica Korka, the director of Activates Lab, to tell us more about these borderlands we stand on. Um, yes, hello. Uh, yes, my name is Monica Kirka. Um, I'd like to start, in maybe an annoying way for some of you, but just bear with me. Um, if we could close our eyes, and I want you to imagine a time where you crossed a border. Maybe you just crossed the border to come here. Maybe you flew or drove in or walked in. Um, maybe you crossed a state border. But then also I want you to remember a time when you maybe crossed a, not just a physical border, but maybe a social border. Maybe you met a friend or you had an uncomfortable conversation. Or maybe you went a little further and had an emotional border where you gave more, or you crossed over to a place that was uncomfortable. Or political border. Just think about what you felt, what you smelled, what you saw. And now I want you to think about a time when a border crossed you. Think about a time when somebody weaponized otherness in you. And then what you felt, what you saw, where you stood. You can open your eyes. The first time the border crossed me, I was a young child. Um, my first memory of coming to this country, I, was, I woke up in somebody else's house, and I was... Um, with my brothers and sisters, my parents were in a different home. And, um, we could do the first slide. And uh, my parents had been involved in, uh, in fighting the communist regime in Romania. And so they came as refugees to the United States. This is a blurry picture because the picture is actually bad quality, not because of this. Um, this was in 1981. And my mom dressed us up in Romanian uh, garb uh, to come to America. And I remember the borders we had across, not just the physical one, but I remember the social borders, I remember the language borders. Um, and I also remember that we also built ladders to, cross, to scale the walls and we built bridges. Um, and we also built tightrope sometimes. Um, and we, we did cross these borders um, because it was worth it. And so I'm really happy here Thank you uh, to be here uh, to build up for the honor. Um, so my name is Monica Kirka. I'm co-director of Activate Labs with Thor Morales, who's doing the time cards and taking pictures. Um, and really honored to be here. Um, at Activate Labs, we do something called peace design, where we work with people that are directly impacted, frontline organizations um, and individuals, uh, by violence, trauma, um, even oppression, and work together to center the margins, to basically look at what is on the margins and bring it to the middle. Um, and so we work through a design process. It's participatory experiential, it includes art, storytelling, creativity. But the idea of shifting power is core to our work. And so we want to always bring what is on the margins into the center. Um, permaculture design, which is a type of farming, um, teaches us that at the margins is the richest part. That's where the richest, most nutritious part of any garden is. And we can also say it's true for on the borderlands or on the margins that some of the richest, most deepest conversations and the most uh, difficult times are happening on the borders and the margins. And so we're, we're trying to see how we only, not only just work, you know, on the social margins, on the physical margins, but really build peace and bringing those into the center. This last year, we had the opportunity to do this. So we did some responsive peace building in, um, along the, the migrant caravan, along the border. Uh, we could do the next slide. And we, we brought our posters, maybe you saw some out there. Um, and we, I made these huge banners um, that are like coloring books. And people colored them in. And you, we do, you know, peace design kind of in a closed workshop, um, but this was much more open, so it was an opening. And it was meeting people where they are. 
And the, the goal was like same, same as maybe a food, uh, like a soup kitchen where it gives one meal, but it helps people get to the next place. We said, you know, what if we were an emotional or trauma healing soup kitchen where people can get enough resilience and sustainability for that day? And then maybe, maybe they'll, they'll go to the next stop. I remember there was one boy, um, he, so this was in July 2019. In the United States, what was happening was the family separation. I'm uh, sorry, 2018. So thousands of children were being separated from their parents. And here we had, um, everybody here had been separated. This was McAllen, Texas. It was like the Ellis Island, they called it. New York Times called it Ellis Island of the United States. It was literally hundreds of people every day in the bus station. It was shocking. I've worked in Gaza. I worked in refugee camps. And it was a refugee camp. It was like beyond what you can imagine. Um, people without shoes on, people shuffling because their shoelaces were taken off um, with masks, half-dressed. Um, so they had been in the Yelera, which is the ice box, um, and then they're released. And so these are children, thankfully, and families that when the policy, the no tolerance got stopped, they got reunited with their families. So they were going into, from the, from the Yelera, from the ice box, they were being released at the bus station, and then Catholic Charities would pick them up and bring them to the respite center. So every night, we worked with Mayra Gomez, a peace builder, an amazing woman, and we did um, these, uh, we called them peace activations. So there was a young boy that had been separated from his family, and he, in the, in the Yelera, you know, they give him water from a tap, from like a drink, like a faucet, and uh, frozen burritos, I'm not sure why they're frozen, probably something about torture policies, but they're not good food, they haven't eaten, so I'm sure this boy's hungry. Um, and they eat uh, like at four in the morning, like 11, and then uh, like at four in the afternoon. And so it's, it's very, you know, there's a lot of processes that, that make them hungry. So he came out and he had his pizza in his hand and he came out of the respite center, just there's a door to the left of this, um, with his pizza. And then he came and he said, whoa. And he handed me the pizza, like some like hold my beer. He handed me the pizza and um, he just started coloring and he didn't eat. And at that point, I knew that art and, and the arts can fill a void when words fail us, when dialogue stops, when policies fail us, when we just cannot communicate anymore. And we saw that, that even in this, where people were filling in the liminal space, we're filling in these borderland kind of spaces, um, these are actually like images of a, of a border, that they were filling in with peace. And so our provocation there was, you know, what are we doing in these, in these really rich spaces between the borders, between the margins? Are we filling that in with, with peace? And so what we hope and what my challenge for this conference is that we will fill it in with peace. And that even here, we have a lot of borderlands between us. And how do we fill it in with peace? I have the honor to, to design the, the program. And as you can see, it's a uh, coloring book. Um, and some of... Uh, some of the designs in here are from our posters, but um, the real goal is for you to use the crayons given and to, to color it in. Um, and then I hope that we'll have, which I'm gonna give you an opportunity right now, a chance to do some coloring exchange, some colors exchange, where you find somebody that has a color you want, and maybe they want your color. Um, so why don't we take one second and find somebody to, to trade a color with. <laughs> And I hope by the end we could have it filled in and we can show each other what we've created and it could be an inspiration to see how do we fill in the gaps and how do we fill it in with peace. Thank you.